Hello, this is MakerJ101, and today I'm going to be doing a video that has been long awaited on YouTube. Um, I have not seen one yet on YouTube of um, a LED light ball how-to video. Um, I will not be making one in this video. I will only be showing you um, how I made mine and some of the parts that you can use. Um, I'll be showing schematics and, yeah, tips where you can find stuff. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, close-ups and pictures and, yeah, whatever. Um, so today, or in this video, if I, well, I might squeeze the um, control um, part on too, but I think I'll just make it of this part for the first video, so there'll be two parts. Okay, so an LED light bulb is pretty simple. It's basically got three LEDs, a red one, a green one, and a blue one, and those are on a um, thing that spins on the motor shaft, okay, and then that motor is connected to by this wood to another motor which is down here and yeah so that's basically the main parts of it um so i call this the spinner head i'm not really sure what the real name is for it but um yeah so okay so basically um we have a motor this motor is from a it's the same exact kind as this one which has a i think it's a three quarters inch long shaft um, I think it's a 9 volt motor, it's from a um, CD player, um, the main, or the disc, the motor that spins the disc, um, but yeah, so basically what I've got on the shaft is I have a plastic tube um, put on the shaft, and then on the plastic tube I have a piece of antenna tube, um, and that's the, the brush rubs against that, and then uh, then next I have a gear that I um, machined a little bit on the motor. Um, I just took a razor blade and shaved it down a little bit till it was the right size um, so that it would fit these little potentiometers or variable resistors. And yeah, so the way it's wired up is all of the LEDs negative sides are connected to the end of the motor shaft. They are soldered right on there. That was actually a pretty hard um, thing to solder because the motor shaft took a long time to heat up. Um, but if you have a high wattage soldering iron, that shouldn't be too hard. Um, and then I have the main wire coming out, and that's been repaired many times because when I first built this, the wire was way too thin and it broke too easy. Um, but what you want to do is you do not want to um, just solder the um, legs of the LED and that's all that's supporting it because the will, the LED will actually the legs will just get pulled right out of it. So the way I have it here is the um, the it's actually getting supported by this little wire here. I'll give you a close up of. That. Okay, so here's a close up of the LED. Um, so basically, what I have is I have uh, the LED and then I have a piece of copper wire wrapped around it. The actual because there's a little lip on the LED on LEDs. Um, and then after the, um, the actual wire that's wrapped around there is soldered onto this main wire here, which is the support wire, which is soldered on here. And then I have the, um, actual legs of the LED, um, soldered to these little wires here. And then they're heat shrinked. There's heat shrink around them. And then after I had the sh heat shrink, those all heat shrinked on, I um, then uh, took these wires and soldered them down here. So all of the, the centrifugal force of the LED trying to go out when it's spinning really fast is getting supported by these little wires and the LED casing, not the legs, because if it was getting supported by the legs, the legs would get pulled right out. Um, and I, my first design was like that and the legs did get pulled out of the LEDs and I destroyed quite a few. Um, and that's because my LED light bulb has so, it's quite large actually, it's about three inches, so, or the diameter is about six inches I think, um, so this is like three inches. Um, so there's a lot of force getting pulled on this LED. Um, my camera's not focused at all. Um, okay, so as I was saying before, this is how the LEDs are connected, um, so all of the, um, force is being exerted on that um, 
ridge around the LED space. So basically, I have uh, then these are bent. Oops. Um, so like this, so that all that force, and then these two wires here would be soldered onto the main wire here. And you want to use something very strong for this. Um, I've used many. I've repaired this a lot of times because it has a lot of force pulling on it outward when it's spinning this way, number one. And then when it starts spinning this way, then there's a lot of force going back and forth on it too. So if you use weak wire here, it's going to um, bend very easily if it's going at high speeds. Um, one thing I would recommend or a lot of the LED light bulbs that I have seen, there isn't real a lot of videos of them out there. Um, they're very well designed. Um, they put into a lot of thought and a lot of engineering and such. But the problem is with them is they um, the motors spin too slowly, so they just don't look real. I don't know. You don't get the effect. I mean, it's not it, when it's going. It doesn't really look like a ball or a sphere, it's more like just LEDs moving around. Um, so, if you're going to make one, make sure you make it so that it can go fast enough. Um, now mine, it, it's three inches. Um, most of the ones out there, they're only the LED length, the lead, so about that big. So mine is about twice as big as most of the other ones out there. Um, so there's going to be a lot more force on the LEDs. Now if it was only this big, it would probably be fine if you only used, um, if you didn't um, use wrap the wire around it. The, uh, the LED's leads could probably withstand um, the force um, if you just, if it's only this big. So, yeah. Um, but then after this wire is put over top of the LED, um, I have put lots of super glue all over it so that holds it on even more. Um, because the wire has a tendency to break. Um, let's see what else. So yeah, and then I have this wire, the main wire here, goes up, and there's heat shrink to hold it so that it doesn't move around much. So you could actually, if these two wires here broke, actually four wires, you could actually pull the LED off. Um, so all of the forces being... Um, yeah, well, whatever, okay, you probably get the idea, um, but yeah, so what else, what's the next part, so then we've got the motors just glued on here, um, so all the ground of the LEDs, um, connect to the middle here, and that's all soldered, um, to the motor shaft, and this motor, um, is a pretty good motor, it's, um, I did check to see if the, um, if there was good, connection between the shaft and the casing because or else if it, if there wasn't then you would have to use um, two um, slip rings um, I'm only using one for the um, positive side let me refocus okay so here's a close-up of the brushes and the potentiometers um, so the potentiometers are just there because I think blue LEDs use like three three point like five volts red ones only use like two point something and green ones uh, like in between there somewhere so they all use different um, amounts of power so if you all hook if you hook them all directly to the slip ring um, then you would have problems like the red one would be very bright and it would almost burn out and the blue one would be very very dim so you have to have something to adjust them um, a lot of people just have one resistor and they figured out how much um, what value they need but I decided to do um, potentiometers because I had enough room there and I had them and I thought that it would probably be best because I could adjust them to the perfect amount. Um, so basically I could almost turn one of the LEDs off if I um, wanted to. Uh, so yeah, um, I think they're about 5k potentiometers but I'm not really sure. Um, so then the positive is just have a, a wire there, heavy duty wire. Um, and the positive comes down here, and it has a, I think it's a, like, I think it's 10 ohm resistor, um, and that just goes, just, just in case something shorts out and it, 
um, it doesn't ruin the LEDs. Um, so it's to take some of the power. And then that goes down into an antenna tube there that I'm using. Let me refocus the camera again. Okay, so here's a close up of the resistors. The other, the larger resistor is for this motor. I just decided to um, use that um, just so, to limit a little bit of the power. Um, so this wires the positive of the motor. This one is the negative of the motor and that's also connected to the um, casing of the motor which is the ground of the LEDs so or the negative. So those two wires go down here. The positive one goes through this little resistor or large resistor and then goes down into the little antenna tube there. Um, I've got this um, threaded rod here with some uh, standoff and um, a nut on there and that's just to counterweight the motor so it's not too wobbly. Um, so yeah, let's see. I'll go to the next part. So that, down here I have a brush and a um, slip ring. I did not make this slip ring. I conveniently and very lucky that I found a um, VCR with a brush or a, a slip ring assembly right on the top and it had the perfect number of um, rings too which I was really lucky um, so I just took I salvaged that from a VCR and it was the only one that I've ever seen it was a really old one too um, so that's one place you might be able to find one is if you get a very old VCR like 19 like 50s maybe I'm not really sure how old it was but um, so yeah and then I have another motor over here and that's what also this is from the bearings in here um, are very nice um, I'll take it apart a little bit more here and give you closer okay so I've desoldered the wires um, oh, I forgot to mention the ground wire from the motor goes down here and is soldered to this pipe so this is a antenna tube um, yeah, so that, and this standoff is, or this, the um, bushing, or whatever it's called, um, is from a VCR also. So it's like, uh, this one doesn't have one of those, but, um, yeah, so, and these two screws, it has two threaded holes in it, which these screws fit, and they were the perfect length also. Um, so that just goes right on there. Yep, and then the wires come up through that tube and they're coming out right now but the bearings in this are very nice see whoa see it spins really good and then I've got a gear stuck on there and this is the um, brush assembly or the um, slip ring assembly now most people on YouTube because they don't have one of these um, uh, the camera needs to Okay, so I was super lucky to find one of these. Um, most of the people on YouTube that I've seen, they have to make theirs out of um, old antennas like this. And that's a lot of work, so yeah, I was very lucky to find this. But it's got three, so I think the bottom, yeah, the bottom one, this one right, or no, no, this end one. This is the ground, then we have this one, which is... Uh, I don't exactly remember which one is which. One of these is the LEDs. I think the LEDs is the middle one, and the um, spinner head motor is this one. So they, it's just enough. Um, now, if I if I was gonna if this one, I, it would actually still work if there was only two because the ground is actually connected to the tube, and these bearings would actually conduct electricity so I could just have this as the ground and I wouldn't have to have a brush but I still have it anyway so I mean it was there so and I didn't use it so I may as well use it so yeah okay so here's the brushes and those are just connected up there and also the ground of this motor and that's just a motor I think it's from a printer um, the ground of that motor is connected also to the ground of everything else which is this wire right here the blue one um, and then we, this wire here is the motor is this motor two um, the power for that and then this one the yellow one I think yes the yellow one is the LED um, positive wire and then this pink one is the um, number one motor wire 
So yeah, I guess that about covers it. It has a pretty, the base is oak, but it wasn't heavy enough. It would still topple over real easy when it was going at full speed. So I have this um, bunch of pieces of metal just um, on there. You could just um, uh, C clamp it to your desk or put it in a vise, but I just, I don't have one in here. So I decided to do that. Um, let's see what else. I guess that about covers it for the LED light bulb part. Um, yeah, so it's screwed together. I think I also glued it, um, but it's pretty sturdy. Okay, so the video is probably already too long, but um, here's a schematic I drew up. Um, we've got the three LEDs over here. We've got the three potentiometers, um, and those are all connected together so that um, we have the Negative is connected to the motor shaft, and then we've got the um, positive is connected to that slip ring, which is right there. And then we've got two 10 ohm resistors, which are there and there. And then we've got the three slip rings, which is down here, and that's probably the hardest part to build. Um, unless you have one like that, um, which is very, very nice. Um, and then we've got the main motor, and then we've got the wires, which are four there, which go to the control panel. Um, Let's see what else. Um, I hope this helped a lot. Um, I hope to see you in the next video, um, which is part two. Um, hopefully that will be out soon um, of the control panel. Um, if you have any questions, um, just put them in the comment box down there. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.